There is very little doubt that any chat about e-mountain bike motors will incite some very healthy debate. Previously on Future Tech, we saw how brands are increasingly offering higher or lower powered e-mountain bike systems. But let's face it, that's not exactly Future Tech, that's happening right now. And it's not just about motors, batteries as well. I'm sure in 2021 and beyond, we will see five to 600 watt hour batteries be replaced by 700 to 900 watt hour units. And also, or hopefully, as many of you guys point out, that the componentry will become more durable to boot. Now motors themselves are certainly getting lighter for both high power and lower powered bikes. Torque continues to be narrowed within the higher power bikes, but will we see torque being standardized? When will the Chinese brands start having a bigger impact on EMTB? Because let's face it, we're already seeing collaborations with the likes of Forestal. There are, of course, many, many other questions. For example, how long will it be before we see a totally silent e-mountain bike motor? Will derailers and cassettes be around much longer? What about traction control? What about energy conservation? Will the German and Japanese boffins continue to dominate? What about the efficiency of systems? And finally, do we actually need more power? Will we, will we see significant uh, improvement in the efficiency of, of e-mountain bikes? 15 or 20 years out, for sure. Um, absolutely agree, and for sure, uh, I think here is also the the drivetrain. I mean, we are still working with drivetrains, which are in the market since I don't know how many years, the, the, the pure system, um, the pure style. I think here we will see massive change in the future um, that will also help um, to Im Im improve or increase efficiency um, out of the e-system software sides, uh, but also mechanical side, um, I think, all those points are like we are kind of in still in in in, in the start a phase and and by far not especially for for all e-bike categories by far not at the end of the line now let's talk about the efficiency of current e-mountain bikes in terms of the actual power that gets to the back tire on the road mm -hmm. or on the track uh you know lots of e-mountain bikes are about 48 50 percent efficient right you have to see where the losses are coming from. Um, to very big picture, there's two categories. One is the motor, just the efficiency of the motor. Um, and the other one is uh, losses in the tire. There is battery efficiency. And that's just like how much of the chemical energy can you actually change into voltage and current? Well, I'm going to change that. Um, battery capacity, there is uh, small little increases year after year after year. Um, we're not going to double the capacity overnight, um, but we, we will in the future get more capacity out of the same volume. Okay, coming back to the, the where the, the big losses are right now, uh, it's the motor and uh, it's uh, the tire. Motors, if you pedal cadence, say, I don't know, more than 60. The majority of the motors on the market are at, a, are at an efficiency range of 75, 80 which is actually not bad. Um, getting to an efficiency of say 95% would be, I would, at this point, it's unachievable. With gears and et cetera, just you don't get there. But imagine you would, that would get you a range increase of 10, 15%. It's not that much. It's in, in, in terms of efficiency, I'm, I'm going at a total different angle do we really, okay, why, why does efficiency matter? Is because you don't want to carry around all the weight and you want to range. Everything else is just, doesn't matter. Um, I'm then coming, do we need all the power? Do we really need 600 watts, 550 watts, 500 watts on the trail? Or is it okay to only have, I don't know, 300 watts? 
And uh, by that, you have a lighter bike, uh, you have a smaller motor, you have a lighter battery, etc. Uh, you bring a range extender, or etc., etc., etc. That is a total different angle uh, where we can just help people understand their energy consumption and just help them riding longer by just preventing them from wasting energy. The temptation to run turbo malt all the time is pretty high. I, I mean, I get it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we expect. So we're going into a new era of education of, of uh, power consumption and obviously. Smart Control. We launched Smart Control in 2015 in Leo Gang, and uh, it's still valid. Uh, we, I mean, you know you're going to ride for two hours. You're not going to ride for five hours if you start, or you know how long you want to ride. Just tell the bike I want to ride for two hours and let the bike do its thing. And then uh, regardless of what tire you mount. And I think that's okay. It's, we, we're, not, we're not doing uphill races um, like you guys sometimes do to compare bikes. On a Sunday ride or on a, I don't know, Wednesday evening ride, whatever, um, you just go out and ride with your buddies. And uh, what, what we're doing, and every rider does it, in the brain, how, okay, what mode do I choose? Um, how long do I still have to ride? What is my energy consumption, etc. That monitoring. I truly believe we need to take this away from the rider and just uh, let the rider ride and we take control over the consumption, making sure that he actually comes home or gets home uh, without uh, draining the battery to zero. There's a big question surrounding this motor power. With batteries getting increasingly smaller, will we see some brands increase both the power and the battery capacity and build bikes which are more SUV than MTB? Certain bike categories need very powerful motors. And I'm going again on the uh, on-road SUVs, I'm going on uh, cargo, et cetera. Those need, those need more power than any trail rider. I think the danger is that uh, we, un we, we don't educate that customer and we, don't, we send him in the forest mm. and he doesn't know what he does, uh, doesn't know the rules, uh, doesn't have the technical skills. And it's just then uh, uh, giving, giving a bad taste and uh, a bad view on what we believe mountain biking is all about. And, yeah. but, that's up, but that's up to us to educate the people, uh, to tell them, uh, hey, there's, uh, this product is for this category. If you want to do this over here, there's a different product for you. It's up to uh, you guys uh, on the journalism side. It's up to the brands, us. It's, it's, it's up to the dealers. It's education. I mean, if you, uh, same as like when you buy a car, uh, uh, you inform yourself whether you want to buy a race car or an SUV or a... Uh, a normal family car or van. Um. And as I mentioned earlier, how long will it be before we see more advanced motors with, dare I say it, traction control? I truly believe with the amount of power we're carrying with us, some sort of traction control, some sort of torque control will be relevant in the future. Um, just we've all, like everybody has been in the situation where you just spin out on an uphill, um, or on a walk assist situation where the, there's no load in the rear wheel, the rear wheel is just spinning around. Um, I truly believe we can be smarter in dealing with that. Can we 100% eliminate that and, and we go in a crawl mode? <laughs> just go up a hill. Um, there's two reasons I don't think so. Uh, one reason is we do not want to become a remote control car that just crawls up the hill. I think then it just becomes, doesn't become natural again. And the other thing is you still have the rider's legs pushing on the pedals. And even on a normal enduro trail bike, uh, you, you spin out. I mean, unless we slow down the rider and, and, and actively with brakes, uh, <laughs> slow down his cranks, even, like, even if you disconnect the motor entirely with the, the, the force on the pedal, he can spin out. So um, I truly believe there is certain help we can do. There's uh, some assisted whatever. Uh, eliminating it, um, don't think we'll get there anytime soon. Um, but there are small little nuances. It's we um, actually with you, we've written up the so-called zigzag trail. We've done some some video sections, <laughs> and 
that trail, there are sections on the trail where you can totally tell this motor is good, this isn't good. And there is no perfect motor yet Ooh. riding up the trail. There, the, the, I'm just saying, it, not like there are situations where you're like, damn, this, uh, we can do better. <laughs> and, 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 that, and that motivates me. Like this is like this is a this is a challenge uh, and uh, challenge accepted. Uh, there are, are there are things we can do. Um, uh, will that take a year or ten years? I don't know. And a few final points. What about motor weight, materials, and of course, energy consumption? Well, I think we leave those till next time. In the meantime, folks, let's know your thoughts on e-mountain bike motors and e-mountain bike systems as a whole.